You're watching Weekends here at the Backyard Tech Channel. Toyota's mighty 1FZ FE 4.5 litre inline 6 cylinder petrol engine for the 80 series, 100 and 105 series Land Cruisers. One of the best big 6 cylinder engines as far as old mates is concerned, Toyota made. A low slugging, low revving, fairly torquey petrol motor for a four wheel drive. But how do you know if your 1FZ FE is in good condition? And what are some of the things you're going to have to consider if it's not? It's 80 series time here at the Backyard Tech Channel. This one, we're going to go over the basics of the 1FZ FE. And I'm also going to show you how to tell if your engine is in good, is in good condition. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. It is 80 series time again here at the Backyard Tech Channel for a Saturday for weekends here at the Backyard Tech Channel. And again, this is for Tom, who last night dropped another bombshell on the Backyard Tech Channel live stream conversations because he apparently needs to replace his front end cam shaft seals. And it was suggested he uses gasket maker. Now, frankly, I don't believe in that. Before we get into the crux of this video though, I have to do the formalities because you know if I don't, the amount of pain I get into, I know it makes the video longer, but I've got to say it. I am in no way, shape or form a fully qualified mechanic. Therefore, if you are following along with this service repair and or information video, you're doing this at your own risk. So you have been warned. I've rebuilt a Land Cruiser, I know my Land Cruiser like the back of my hand. Mechanically, body, everything. Twice in the entire time I've owned my 80 series has it been to a mechanic. Once for the starter motor, and I physically could not fit it. I didn't have the tools or parts or anything like that. The second, again, was for the input seal on the front diff. I didn't have the necessary tools, components, or ability to fit the seal. But the rest of the work on the 80 has been done by me. Now, the 1FZ FE engine, as far as I'm concerned, is one of the best motors ever made by Toyota. It wasn't just used in the 80 series Land Cruiser over in America, it was available in the Lexus LX450, Lexus's version of the Toyota Land Cruiser. They are not an engine designed to get thrashed. They're a low slugging, low revving engine. Okay. You look at some engines these days and the tacos on your clusters will start to arc up at around 6,000, 7,000 revs. You start getting into the red zone. The big 80 series, your red zone starts at 5,000 revs. That's it. By 6,000 revs, you will probably be valve bouncing your engine. Now, Tom was suggested that he's got to replace his front cam seals. Now, using gasket maker. Now, I don't agree with that. Gasket maker, as far as I'm concerned, is a short-term fix. You're best off getting and buying the gaskets. So for this video, we're going to go out to my 80 series. I've just got back. I had to duck out quickly. The engine's warm. I'm going to show you how to check for noises and sounds coming from the 1FZ FE that will indicate whether you've got trouble with your engine or your engine's in good running nick and a few other bits and pieces you can actually check regarding the state of your motor. Now the one thing a lot of people don't know, which surprises me, because I know about it, we know the saying, if I know it, everyone knows it. The 1FZ FE engine is a chain timing system. It's a timing chain. So the two things you've got to check also to listen for are your chain tensioners. Now, 
Toyota used timing chains for years on their larger engines. Now, some people say, well, if it's a timing chain, you don't, you never have to worry about it. Yes, you do. Because if your chain tensioners screw up, your chain can warp, basically. Now, with my engine specifically, we know I have that leaky seal on the power steering pump. I need to do something about that. But at the moment, running the power steering stabilizer and that seems to have prevented a lot of the leaks coming out. So what we're going to do, my engine's hot. So we're going to start her up. We're going to leave her in park. And there are some noises you can listen for. Now, one of the squeaking noises I've got is from my water pump. But it's not a bad noise. It occasionally happens. Okay? So we're going to go out to my car. We're going to have a look at some of the things you can check on your 1FZFE to indicate whether or not you need to do some maintenance on your engine. Generally speaking, though, it is an extremely strong and reliable motor. Now, you Nissan fans out there, I know you're going to sit there and go, no, 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 Nissan's far more reliable. Look, let, let's take that out of it. Sure, Nissan's four and a half litre six cylinder petrol motor also has a reputation of being good, but I don't have that. I have a four and a half litre six cylinder Toyota engine. So I'm going to go out, we're going to look at my motor and look at some of the things you can do to check. Now, the one thing that I've never had to do to my motor so far, touch wood, is take the top off it. Right? There's no oil leaks from the top of the motor. There's a small water leak, we know that, but there's no oil leaks at the top of the motor. I'm going to show you how you can view that as well. Now, I do have a small oil leak from the pressure sender, because the seals had it. But getting to the pressure sender on my car isn't an easy job. And one day we might do a video on it if I can figure out a quick, simple KIWS way of getting to the pressure sender. So let's head out to my 80 series and I'll show you a few things that you can do to check over your 1FZFE engine. All right, well, apologies for the wind noise. It is blowing 10 bags out here at the moment. So hopefully you can hear me. Um, now I know my engine's filthy but we'll take that out of the equation for the time being. Now, according to Tom, it's been suggested that he replaces his front cam seals, okay, using gasket maker. My opinion of that is that's a short-term fix. You really should replace the seals as per factory, to be honest with you. But there are a few things you can check. Now, to start off with, all this is just power steering fluid that's getting flung up around the belts and that to the top of the engine, all right? That's all that is. But there are no oil leaks anywhere across the top of my motor. And that's because the rocker cover gasket is actually in perfect condition, all right? There's no leaks anywhere at the top of my motor. I have no fuel leaks or oil leaks anywhere at the top of my motor. Now, remembering with the Toyota 1FZFE, it is a chain-driven timing system, okay? Now, also, you can see there that it's a double overhead cam, 24-valve, six-cylinder. When you have a 1FZFE that's not running right, there will be interesting and varying noises coming both from within the block as well as elsewhere around the motor. The first thing you've got to check, though, is you've got to make sure that your rocker cover gasket is in good nick. If it's not, take the top off the motor, uh, take, sorry, take the rocker cover off the motor, put a new gasket on it, all right? Don't use gasket maker for your rocker cover gasket. If it's a short-term fix, you're out on the tracks, you need to, you know, something to get you home, fine. You're best off putting proper gaskets in. Now, a lot of people will say, no, you don't, you can just run gasket maker. I've said I don't agree with that as a long-term solution. The other thing you need to check are your exhaust manifold gaskets, okay? And your exhaust shield. If that's had it or got leaks of oil on it, you know you've got problems at the top of the motor, okay? The other thing you need to check, which is a little bit more tedious, is your inlet manifolds. Make sure that the gaskets around those are fine. Now, my gaskets are perfectly good, okay? I know that because, again, I've got no oil leaks or anything at the top of the motor. So how should a 1FZFE sound in idle? Well, 
well, that's easy. Like this. A little bit of tap at noise, but nothing too severe. No clicking from the timing chain, which means my tensioners are in good condition. What we can do though, if I can get to it, thermo clutch fan shutting down now the other thing you can check too is to see how the exhaust sounds if you're hearing a lot of big pops and 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 that coming from the exhaust it means you've got a timing error at idle this should be how your engine sounds normally now if my rocker cover gasket was gone you'd start to see oil leaks around the rocker cover that is a good sounding smooth running 1fz the other thing you can check too is the gasket around your dizzy. Make sure that's in good nick. Again, you'll know if it's not because you'll see leaks of either oil or whatever coming from the dizzy. These engines are essentially rip-roaringly strong. Very strong engines. But they're not designed to get thrashed. Now what I mean by thrashed, we go into mine, you can see, if I can get my camera there, the red line of this car is starts at five at 5,200 revs. The best operating conditions for the motor are in between about, 1800, about 1,600 through to about 4,200 where you run out of power. But your maximum torque on this engine is 34 to 3550 revs all right now how do i know this it's very well known with a 1fz fe engine very well known now another thing to check to check also to make sure your engine is in optimal running is airflow the mass block in some cases, these are fairly reliable, but when they stuff up, you know about it very quickly. If your engine's not running real well, the problem could be here with the mass block, mass airflow sensor. All right. You need to make sure too that your air, in, air intake hose between the mass block and the throttle body is well tightened. That way you're not getting vacuum air coming in over the top of the throttle body under acceleration check that your you can see here that my hoses here for the purge tank need to be replaced <coughs> excuse me need to be replaced sometime in the next couple of months I will have to replace the purge tank hoses all right these should be replaced you can see them starting to crack all right these should be replaced very soon all right, it's, again, that's a pretty easy job to do. If I can do it, we all can do it, all right? Now, apart from that, all that stuff you see down the bottom of the motor is power steering fluid getting flung around from off the um, fan belts. Now, your fan belts, mine are perfectly good, all right? They were replaced when I bought the motor and they are still in pretty good condition. There's no cracks or anything. Now, replacing them ain't exactly easy because it requires you to actually take the uh, thermofan 
off it so that you can actually replace the belts. Unless you want to try and jam the belts across the front of the thermo fan between the radiator and the fan. So if, you, if your engine doesn't sound right, now the other thing you'll note too is if you start to get a rattle here in the timing case. If you're getting rattles here, that means your chain tensioners are stuffed and you have to replace them. The one big thing about this engine is it is not a thrashable motor. Some people get the idea that these big six cylinders are really powerful and you can wind them out. No, you can't. The maximum power of this thing is about 200 horses, 212 horses at about 4,200 revs. But you run out of torque on this motor before you run out of power. So there are a few things you need to check also. You need to check also the hot water return pipe coming off the block into the thermostat housing and water pump housing. Your vacuum hoses here. Um, I'm due to replace these very soon. They're nearly 12 months old. Um, these are just standard tubing which you can cut and these will need to get replaced. They don't look that bad at the moment but they will get replaced in about three or four months. Uh, I've got to replace these two hoses at the top. They've got to be replaced. This hose is due to be replaced and so is this hose. All right. Um, these hoses are about two years old, so they're due to be replaced already. Also, your throttle sensor needs to be checked. Okay, if your throttle sensor is not in the right spot, your engine will run like a dog. You need to get that checked. Now, this is your ECU checkpoint here. All right, this is your diagnosis plug. If you own a Land Cruiser, you should know where the diagnosis plug is. And also, if you plan on going and getting a Mac 32, this will be what you need to check your engine with. This will show up your fault codes and timing and everything. So one thing I don't have. So there are a few basic checks that you can do to check the your condition of your 1FZ, but also start the engine. See how the motor sounds and make sure that it sounds similar to this. This engine's running really well. That's mainly because I look after it but the engine in itself is running like a dream. Also, you can tell if your engine's struggling to start, all right? And that is how long it takes for it to kick up, all right? For example, that's how quickly it should start, right? That's how quick this motor should kick up, all right? A couple of seconds longer, that's fine, but if you're finding that it's taking forever to kick up, You've got an engine problem, which needs to be looked at, all right? Now, in Tom's case, um, just take a shot of this for those who like the 80 series. There you are. But in Tom's case, he's looking at doing a 1HD TFTE conversion. Now, for those that aren't familiar, the 1HD TFTE engine is basically electronic fuel injected 4.2 litre turbo diesel. My concern with his 1FZ FE is, uh, this is from the details that he's shared, whilst his body is in great condition, the engine has definitely seen better days. How do you fix a 1FZ FE that's been thrashed? Well, you start looking for componentry that's well worn out. Whether it be hoses whether it be you know you you're probably going to have to take the top off the motor so that's the rocker cover the head the whole lot and look at the state of the cylinders look at the state of the pistons the one FZFE if well maintained will last a long time but it's not an engine that you want to constantly put your foot through the firewall with just because it's a big six cylinder engine doesn't mean it's designed to get thumped. Now, some people have this notion that a petrol land cruiser cannot go where a diesel can. Yes, it can. 
It can go everywhere a diesel can. The downside is, is it's petrol, meaning you are going to use more petrol in four-wheel drive mode than a diesel will. Now, to give you guys an idea, my engine's nearly due for another service. So that's oil, air, uh, coolant, everything. When my engine is freshly serviced, fresh oil, etc., I can go from my place here in Leopold to the other half's parents' joint the other side of Bendigo and get a fuel economy as low as 16 to 17 litres per 100 kilometres. Now, it's 235 kilometres I have to travel. Remembering that from here to Bendigo, I've got to get through Geelong, I've got to go halfway up to Melbourne, I've got to take another freeway around, I've got to take a main road, and then I've got to get back on another freeway. So there's a fair bit of stop-start traffic. And yet, with that engine running in optimum condition, I can get to Bendigo with around, I say around, 55, 60, 55 to 60 litres left in the tank. So you've got four and a half litre six-cylinder, driving two and a half to three ton of Land Cruiser on 27 inch tires and it's automatic. Personally, that is excellent fuel economy as far as I'm concerned. Does it beat the diesel? No, of course it doesn't. We know diesel is far more economical than petrol will it ever be. So, there's a few things to consider regarding your 1FZFE engine. All right, now I'm not going to obviously start stripping my motor down to show everyone everything because that means stripping the motor down and then we've got to rebuild the motor back up. But to give Tom an idea, I've not once had to take the rocker cover off that motor and the only oil leak I've got is the power steering. That's it. Okay, so, you know, yes, I've got hoses that are due to be replaced middle of this year. Yes, I have, you know, some general upkeep to do on the motor. But because there is no oil leak from the motor, I know my gaskets are good. Now, sure, gasket maker is a quick and easy way of getting out of making gaskets. It's, you buy a tube of it, you're done. You can make any gasket you want. If I had to replace my cam gaskets, I would actually go and buy them. I wouldn't use Gasket Maker. I would go and buy them. Yes, it's more expensive, but I don't have to worry about them then. And the thing is, with that engine, it was well maintained. Now, according to Tom, by the sound of it, his body's in good condition, but the engine has been absolutely thrashed and or poorly maintained. Now, I've always looked after my own vehicles. Okay, I've always looked after my own vehicles. Now, admittedly, yes, that is an electronic engine. We have a full electronic control unit, engine management unit. We have EFI, electronic fuel injection. We have an electronically controlled distributor. So it's a completely electric engine. But in actual fact, the only difference between the 1FZFE and the 1FZF is that I've got EFI. The 1FZF engine does not. It's carburetor. The 1FZFE is a descendant of the 3F. The 4-litre six-cylinder. So, this is half a litre bigger, or 487 millilitres bigger, give or take. And I've got EFI instead of a carburetor. Now, yes, I could do carburetor changeover, but that'd be a mess. So, Tom, you need to look over that motor and find out what exactly is stuffed on it. Because if you're planning on driving it in its current condition, you're actually going to kill the engine before you get a chance to do the 1HDTFTE conversion. If you do end up with an engine like that in really bad condition what options do you have well there aren't many 
swap it out for a second handy, swap it out for a Rico, or Rico it yourself. Get it Ricoed. There aren't many options because once you start replacing bits and you're going from the front of the motor to the back of the motor, you may as well do a, either a complete rebuild or just a top end rebuild. So from the head up, so camshafts, cam seals, rocker cover gasket, um, spark gaskets, that type of stuff. Remembering though that you have to have that 0.8 of a millimeter. So that's how you need to check it. But if you're starting to just replace bits and pieces as you need, you're probably going to end up using more money keeping the 1FZFE going rather than doing a straight diesel diesel conversion or replacing the engine. So there you go. The mighty 1FZFE engine. Now look, I know there are the Nissan people out there will claim that the Nissan six-cylinder is far superior. Well, yeah, that'd be about right because a GU is a newer model engine of the TB45 than I've got of the 1FZFE. All right. Look, if you've got a four-wheel drive that has a petrol engine in it, it's not going to be a high revving engine. The reliability of the 1FZFE is well documented. And it's a strong motor. Now, like I said, if I go off-road on my 80 series, I will use more petrol than the diesel will use diesel. But that's granted. Diesel uses less in a fuel ratio than petrol does. That's general knowledge. It's mechanics 101. Diesel is more economical than petrol. In fact, diesel is probably slightly more economic, or is a lot more economical than gas. But you remember with a gas car, you use less gas than petrol. But you get less per K. If your engine's running really well with the 80 series, you should be getting down around 17 litres per 100k. But off-road, I can use as much as 25 litres per 100k in low range. So there you are, Tom. Hopefully that helps you out. Stick around, more coming up. Have a good one, guys. Cheers.